the first part of my three-part series on how to record gameplay off your console, I want to show you guys what equipment you actually need to take your gameplay footage off of your console and rip it onto your PC in order to have a video file that you can actually work with. So stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to hook up your HD PBR from Hapage. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a Dazzle or a Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle that is also used for recording HD footage. So at the end, I'll just provide the links to where you guys actually can get some more information and everything you can find is in the description down below the video in case you need some more guidance in what to do. Hopefully you guys enjoy and stay tuned for this great tutorial. The equipment needed in order to capture gameplay off your console is an HD PVR from Hapage. It allows you to capture a video at 1080i. Another thing you need is, is component AV cables that are specific to the console that you play on. So it all depends whether it's an Xbox 360, a Nintendo Wii, or a PlayStation 3. In my case, I'm going to be using my PlayStation 3 because it's my main console of choice. Now, another thing that is needed is a computer. The computer allows you to rip the video off of the HD PVR and then store it on there until you later need it for use. So it all depends whether you're a PC user or a Mac user. So afterwards, you can do the audio commentary and render that video on your computer. I'm quickly going to go over everything that's inside the HD PVR unit itself. You get the unit itself, the HD PVR from Hopodge. It does the major encoding inside the box. You get a USB cable in order to connect the HD PVR with your computer, an AC adapter, and then your component cables. So they contain the five component inputs that allow you to stream in 720p and 1080i to your television. Next thing you get is a remote control, which is kind of useless because you can't really use it to control it, and an IR blaster that works with the remote control, and it's mainly for people that want to connect it to a DVR. You also get a package that also contains your software for the HD PVR unit, and it comes with ARC software, your warranty information, and your instruction manual for your HD PVR. So this is everything the unit comes with inside the box, and it's all ready for you to start working with. Next thing I will show you is how to connect the HD PVR unit to your console using the component cables that are specific to the console. Another thing I will show you is the component cables from the HD PVR unit that connect to the television. I will be showing you guys how all the connections work on the back of each unit and where to connect it all. I'm quickly going to show you guys how to connect component cables to your console. Right here I have my specific component cables for my console which is a PlayStation 3. What you're going to do is use the multi AV connector and plug it into the back of the system which is found right next to the HDMI cable and the power cable on the other side. What you're going to do is plug it in firmly. On the other end of this cable you have three video inputs and two audio inputs which contain the left and the right. Make sure you don't mix them up and those are going to get connected to the HD PVR unit themselves. Now just to give everybody a closer look, I'm going to show you how to pop in the cable. And in case you're still lost, there's an optical input, which is the optional way to output audio through the system, in case you want to use it that way to get high definition audio. I'm going to go over all the plugins that are found on the outside unit of the HD PVR itself. There's multiple inputs, both on the front and the back, so it can be a little bit confusing. Up at the top, you have your output. This is where your cables will go from your HD PVR unit to your television. At the bottom, these are the cables coming in from your console. This is where all the video that you will be capturing will be captured. So it's multiple inputs to capture the best possible quality, and everything is encoded inside. Right next to it is the optical out and the optical in for high definition audio, if, even if you have a surround sound. Next to it is an IR remote blaster connector, a USB cable, and your DC in, which pretty much gives you the ability to just power the unit. Not much to it. Now I'm just going to turn the unit around and show you guys what you guys can actually find on the front of the unit. So first thing you'll see is my standard definition RCA inputs, my yellow, white, and red. Next to it is an S-Video, which is even lower grade quality. You have your IR port and a power button just to power on the unit. Pretty simple, nice and clean, great design. 
Now to show you how to connect the HDPVR unit to your console with those component cables that I connected earlier. Make sure that you actually separate the audio cables, your left and your right, which is your red and white cables, and your video cables are also separated. You don't want to mix them up because it will cause you to not get the proper picture. So nice and surely just plug it in into the correct slot. Make sure that the red goes with the red, blue with the blue, and the green with the green. A lot of times if people do mix up the audio and the video red cables, it can actually cause a distorted picture and in some extreme cases it can actually cause the system to malfunction and cause it to be defective. Now you can see those are all the plugs that are really needed to start recording off of your system. You do have the optional optical input and output for your high definition audio. Next thing I'm going to show you is where to connect your component cables for your television. The next thing I will be plugging in is your component cables that will be running from the HDPVR unit to your television. Now you do need a high definition TV that supports component cables. If you do not have that, you would have to use a different set of cables or just use a single S-Video input. Now just like the bottom, the ones running from your PlayStation 3, you have to plug it in into the respective slots in order to get the proper picture outputted. And again, the audio cables, make sure you don't mix them up. You got your white and your red. And I find it a little bit cleaner instead of using the optical cables. Just to simplify everything for you guys, I've removed the cables from the component inputs just to clear everything up so that you guys can see the AC input, the USB, and the optical cables. Now I'm going to start off with the optical cable. Basically, it's used for high definition audio. And what you do is you plug it into the output and the input. One end will be coming from your console if it supports optical inputs, and the other end will actually be going to your high definition stereo system or your surround sound system. Now the next thing that you will actually be plugging in is your USB cable. So this is essentially just a one cable. It plugs in only in one way, a specific way. Do not mix it up or don't force it in. Make sure it plugs in correctly, and the other end will be going to your computer. So what actually happens is the cable will actually carry all the information that's encoded on the unit and carry to your PC and store it on there. And the last thing is the AC adapter cable, which essentially just powers the unit itself. Make sure that you use the AC cable that came with the system and don't you use anything else. Now I'm going to plug in the rest of my component cables and get this unit going. And I'm going to show you guys quickly where to plug in your USB cable. Now just to quickly show you guys where to plug in your USB cable. It is a USB 2.0 cable and there are some HDPVR units, not from Hopage but are from a different company that do support USB 3.0 for higher output in 1080p. It's as simple as just plugging it into your computer, PC or Mac. It works in both and that's all you need to do. Before you power on your HDPVR from Hopage, make sure that you install the software that came with the unit itself. It's fully upgradable and fully updatable, so make sure you do that before you do anything else. The software itself will actually prompt you when you're supposed to plug in the HDPVR with the USB cable. Make sure you do that first, follow all instructions, and then I will show you guys the settings. Now I'm quickly going to show you guys how to set up your PS3 settings. It's essentially the same on the other systems, whether it's an Xbox or a Nintendo Wii. Make sure you refer to the owner's manual in case you're lost. So on the PlayStation 3 system, you're going to go into settings and then you're going to scroll down into display settings. Choose that option. Next, it's going to be your video output settings. Now you're going to see a couple choices here. HDMI, Component D Terminal, Composite S Video, AV Multi Out. Don't get confused by the AV multi out. Choose the component D terminal setting. Now here you're going to see a few standard definition settings. What you're going to want to choose is 480p, 720p. You're more than welcome to choose 1080i, but I advise against it because it does provide a little bit of a distortion and scan lines when recording at that high of a quality, especially if the game supports it. Now, once you're ready with that, just hit the arrow to the right and hit the X button to enter in all the settings. And then it's going to prompt you to set up your audio output settings. So when you're setting up your audio output settings, you're going to see the same options. HDMI, optical digital output, if you chose to use that, and your audio input connector, SCART, AV Multi-Out. So choose the last option, which is the most logical one, which is your AV Multi-Out unit. 
And as soon as you do that, everything's all set and everything should work perfectly. Now it's time to test your HDPVR unit from Hopodge. Make sure you hit the power button on the front and when you press the record button, the unit itself should actually flash and show a blue light as it glows. That tells you that it's actually recording and working properly. I'm quickly just going to test the HDPVR unit with my TV in the background. You're going to see the same video outputted on my PC and on my television. So on the bottom I have my laptop running with the software and you're going to see a little bit of a lag in between my PS3 movements and the movements on my PC. So when you're playing games it's best to always look at the TV instead of the screen on the computer because it can confuse you and it can cause you to lose your games. If you have any questions regarding the Hapage, Dazzle or the Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle Make sure to check out these websites for more information on each product. Continue the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to Gamers Beverage. And for more information, check out part 2 on how to record and use the software that comes with your Hapage HDPVR. And for part 3, how to do commentary and edit your video.